Right. New banners out. Let's take a look at the units and see what's up with them. Okay. Uh, so I did look through them already. And I noted that there's only one very significant one here. And that is going to be Yi Xiang's. But let's look at Hong Lu's first. So it's a six coster, unfortunate. So three gluttony and three pride. Refunds back one pride, so it's about five costs in total. Uh, 22 plus 6 is pretty decent. And before attack, you gain 5 charge count. You gain 2 haste next turn. Okay, not too bad. But then the 1 fragile kicks in and I'm like, ah, damn it. Not very interesting for applying fragile. So we can take all the railway speedrun strats by applying fragile out already. This is not going to fly. Uh, 4 dimensional rift is quite a significant amount of count. The question is... Um... Which situation would you be able to use this ego to apply this amount of count? Like, currently I don't see the synergy for using this followed by something else, for example. But yeah, this, this 4 dimensional rift doesn't really seem worth the cost of this. But this is a pretty strong base ego. I think it does have a lot of power. So it will win the clashes that you need to win. So for just general usage, I think it's totally fine. It costs 25 sanity, I mean that's just about normal, I think. He's uh, around 20 to 25, so really whatever. Gain 5 charge count and gain 2 haste. We currently don't know the ID that would consume this, so not too sure. If they expect us to corrode it, right? We spend the 10 charge count to inflict plus 2 fragile, then that's not gonna work, is it? Because I'm, I'm gonna pay this cost, and then I'm gonna pay this cost but higher to activate this, and then apply 3 fragile instead. Okay, it's 3 Fragile and 6 Dimensional Rift, so that is a little bit better than just applying 3 Fragile, but still, the cost is very high. That's a lot of resources you spend just to accumulate this charge count. So, what's, what's important here is that we need to see the ID that this Ego is going to be attached to. This Ego definitely needs an ID to help you apply the uh, Dimensional Rift first, or gain yourself some charge count. Yeah, actually, just 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 gaining the charge count is all I need from the ego, uh, from the idea. I mean, because if I can get the charge count requirements for this plus two here, then I don't mind actually corroding this every now and then to apply a bunch of fragile and do the damage. Because three fragile is not a small number. Three fragile is thirty percent more damage, way better than this. So if I could use an alternate way to get my charge count and then pop the corrosion here, I could see this being used. I could see this being used because it's actually a pretty decent source of the fragile and most likely you run Kurokumo and Kurokumo has pride on his skill too. It's a Cloud Cutter's energy, isn't it? Yeah, unfortunately the gluttony have to come from somewhere else but uh, you know, there's quite a few sources of Cloud Cut uh, of uh, gluttony energy right now. I think we have uh, G Gregor, Seven Otis. I can't really think of anyone else though. I think Think Tank's Mutilate but that's a tree. That's a skill tree so it's not really a lot. But yeah, this one is going to be tricky to build around for the gluttony here. At least the pride is self-sufficient, so it's not too bad actually on our current IDs. Maybe the W Corp ID will have the gluttony and the pride needed to charge up this ego. So yeah, it really all depends on what the ID is going to be. Because I do see a world where if you can generate quite a lot of charge on yourself, you can use this ego, you can use rabbit... Uh, suppression after you have saved it for a couple of turns and then you have like what nine fragile and then you boom 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 you kill the enemy it seems like it does have a lot of potential but we need to see the id if the id is not good then we wouldn't want to bring this either because then we are bringing a bad id for a one shot strat with a rabbit heath cliff so yeah it, i don't know it, we have to see it, it could be worth it it could not be worth it so it has to we have to see the id it all depends on that passive wise it is not bad uh, when hitting enemy with negative status effects, this unit gains one charge count. So this is a source of charge count. It just happens to not be enough at the current point of time. Because if you gain plus one charge count uh, when you hit an enemy with a negative status effect, um, then really the only way you can maximize this plus four per turn is to cloud cut every turn. Because cloud cut has four hits. While uh, cloud burst, the skill tree for KK only has three hits, so you only get three charge counts. 
and you need to get 10 charge count here in order to get the additional fragility and rupture so yeah once again we need to see the id and how much charge count we can get with the id in order to see this being used and hopefully that id also has some good numbers as well so it's not just a another garbage w corporal that has no damage and then we just don't use them it's like w force right oh you have teleport files which is really good but then the, the id is so eh like I, I don't need this i don't want this to this doesn't help me to reduce my turn so i won't use that so i don't like that at all uh but yeah uh, let's hope that hong Lu's id is not going to be like that and we will be able to see some use of this ego because it is honestly potential here on the corona part. Now then, Hong Lu is freaking amazing. So Hong Lu is sloth and gluttony. So once again, the gluttony problem, right? So I mean, we've seen a lot of gluttony uh, on these two egos. So maybe gluttony will be like the uni unifying resource for all of them. It's like how an Corp has a lot of lust source, right? So if you have a lot, if the NCOP team is binded by Lust, maybe this team is going to be binded by Gluttony. So they will have uh, moves everywhere that apply a little bit of Gluttony. Maybe their skill 2s and skill 1s, for example. Yeah. So this is interesting. It's, this is the second ego, I believe, in the game that does not have pride resource for a pride ego. So it's like Chain of Others, where you take different elements and then you give back a different element instead of like uh, giving back the same element. For example, if we wanted to do this like the same as most of the other egos, we would make this three sloth and then this would be three pride so that this guy refunds back the pride. But in this case, it's not. It's two separate elements and it is for a particularly huge reward. It's 20 plus 18. If your sanity is 45, this is practically 38 all the time. 38 is very, very good. But that's not all. Spend charge count to do more damage. Max of 75% increase, and, and it's not over yet, we deal bonus pride damage by the target's rupture times 10% of the damage dealt, and we reduce the rupture count by 5. So I'm, I'm not too sure about this max 100% thing. The calc here looks really sus. I'm waiting for some uh, data miners or testers to go and test this one out. I probably will be pulling for Yisung at the end of this video because I really want to test this. Like, it looks like there's potential here to do a rupture count into Yisang Bomb, where Yisang is the burster. It's like um, it's like how Tremor works, right? You stack up a bunch of Tremor and then you burst Tremor. But in this situation, what I'm trying to do here is I'm going to stack up a bunch of uh, rupture on the enemy and then I burst it with Yisang's ego, which is actually not too bad. Because if I only use this for bursting the rupture, then all I need to do is pay this every now and then. Yeah, not really too much of a problem. So this ego really looks very strong. And then we look at the corrosion version. Now it's tails focused. So you do not want to roll that. It's 42 here. So if you look here, this is about 38. So 42 is about a, a 4 increase, 4 damage increase. Before attack, spend charge count to deal more damage. It has the exact same effect, all right? If charge count was spent, inflict 3 dimensional rift, inflict 6 rupture, and then deal bonus damage based on the target's rupture and reduce the rupture count by 5. So this is practically the same as the other side, except that it has an additional rupture. So it's actually interesting because we could run tail Zisang or we could run head Zisang. It could be it could be either or. But most likely I think it will be head Zisang because the base ego is heads. Sinclair has um two tail egos on the base here. So if we look at uh Sinclair right If we look at Sinclair, if we looked at the two egos, impending day is minus eight on the base, on the awakening. And then lifetime still is also negative on the awakening. So because the ego here, because the ego here is heads here and uh, negative here, tails here, uh, this should probably be a heads focus uh, ID. That's my assumption, of course. Uh, so this one is obviously the same, but this one is plus plus on both, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, yeah, but Yisang's ego looks really, really strong. Honestly, like, if you want to get the charge count, this this uh, this ego already gives you the charge count source. Because at the start of the turn, if you, you need to no damage last turn, you gain four charge count. And this is really easy to get. If you just win your clash with that one character, so Yisang, you basically have this plus four every turn as long as you keep not taking damage as long as you keep winning your clashes 
After successfully hitting an enemy with lower speed, you inflict plus one rupture count. This one is not interesting until you realize that this is a maintenance uh this is a maintenance uh passive. So what this means is that right, if you inflict plus one rupture count, that means you are maintaining the potency of the rupture on the enemy. So let's say we have 25 rupture and we only have uh we only have like what two charges left for example if you hit right and the enemy has lower speed you inflict one back so you just consume that and you just give it back so you just replaced it so this is actually really strong and if the id had plus one or uh, sorry if the id had like plus one rupture count then this would be plus two rupture count so now you would increase the count so it, like if, for example the enemy has two rupture count you hit you apply one rupture count plus one rupture count, so that's two rupture count. Now you're at three because you just consume one and you replace two. So it's three, and then it becomes four, and then it becomes five. So actually, this is a really strong ego. Like, this is really, really strong. It has the charge count gain, and it's a, it's a lot. It's plus four for doing nothing. All you need to do is win a clash or not get hit. That's it. And then this is a replacement to maintain rupture counts, which is really, really good. And then we have this, which is a nuke, as long as the target has a rupture count on it. The nuke might not be as strong as I would think, but the fact that these two egos, right, are pride, gives me a little hint that the next enemies will be weak to pride. So I think they released this so that we will benefit immensely once the units come out and then we realize that, hey, wait a minute, these guys are weak to piercing and pride. And then we go, aha, now we can nuke them for 400, 600 damage, something like that. So that is my assumptions. So I like this ego a lot. I think it is going to enable a rupture. A, this ego enables a burst rupture playstyle. So you can apply a bunch of rupture stack it to incredibly high levels, assuming that the IDs apply quite a bit of rupture, and then you just nuke it with Yisang's ego, and they will explode if they are weak to pry, weak to pierce. The conditions must be right, basically. But I think that this ego has a lot of potential, especially since the power here is 38. Like, 38 eh? It's 38. Like, who else has 38 on a he ego? I think Ryushu is the only one? Fourth Mesh Flame is like... Fourth Mesh Flame is 32, it's not even 38. Mm. Like, who else has a he ego that does this much damage? I actually can't remember off the top of my head anymore. Like, uh, no, I really cannot think of any. Yeah, no, no. I think this is actually our highest hitting ego. If you guys remember the any, any particular egos that hit super hard, then uh, just let me know because I really can't think of any that hit this amount of power on an ego. But yeah, I think this ego is really strong and I am very tempted to pull him. Before I pull him, let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Uh, do I have the boxes for it? I have 146. Yisang, Yisang. Where are my Yisang shards? Yisang, 121. Hmm. Might be a bit tricky. I would... Eh, I'll probably just pull. Okay, let's just do some pulls here. I got quite a lot of resources from all the... Uh, from all the uh, compensation stuff anyway. Hey, look, my 30 pulls. Alright, let's go. Oh, my first one. You take this. Okay, we we'll just keep going. I think as long as I get one ego off the spin, I'm pretty okay. Okay, my first Honglu. My first Heath Cliff, okay. Sure, sure buddy. Alright, there we go. Which one was it? It's Ting Tang. Do I keep going? That's the real question. Nah, nah, nah. We get one ego. At least get one ego. At least get one ego. This is looking really rough now. This is looking so sus now. This is so sus now. This is so sus now. Am I pulling the right banner? I am, right? Okay. This is so sus. Okay, okay, okay. It's here. It's here. One of them, right? 
Oh, it's Isang's. Nice. Okay, that's the one I wanted. Okay, so there, got the ego. Now, uh, whether you should pull this banner, right, is I would maybe not recommend it unless you really like the idea of these characters, uh, these egos. So these egos, i pretty sure are season one only. Sorry, not season one only. Um, they are basically permanent. They are permanent egos. They are not related to our story at all. So we do not need to worry about them rotating out. Rotating out. Yeah. So these two egos, uh, you do not have to pull them now. You can spark them in the future. But if you have the shots now, maybe you could consider sparking for at least Sisang because I think that ego is very, very strong. I really like this ego a lot. And most likely you all have been grinding your mirror dungeon, so you should have some boxes left over for this. Unless you already like sparked for the rest, then I really don't know. The then in that case, right? Let's say if you already sparked for your Dean Claire's, your uh other your chef your shoes, blah blah blah. In that case, maybe you can just wait until season two and then we see if this ego, all these IDs like have some really good synergy, they look really significant, then you can spark at that point. But I would say that if you have the resources now, you should probably just spark it anyway. Because Yi Sang shots, there really isn't any other Yi Sang um, ID to go and spark, right? So might as well get this one because this one looks really interesting. Looks really strong. Honglu's one, I know Honglu has KK and Ting Tang, so most likely we most most of you guys cannot afford to spark a uh, Ting Tang. So uh, I mean that's to spark this ego when you already sparked for KK Honglu or KK uh, or TT uh, Honglu, yeah. So because of that, I would not recommend getting Honglu now. Maybe you can get him later, but if you have the spares, maybe you can go and get him. But Yi Sang, I would say there is no reason to not get this one because the only good Yi Sang uh, IDs that I know of is this one. The others aren't really used too much for any reason at all. Like, I've tried using them in my runs. I found that I might as well swap them out for this one at least. Because this one, you know, it's it's, it's just free clash power if you get this. And then he has uh, Fragile on skill 2, which is it's only one Fragile, but whatever. And then he has Fierce Fragility, whatever. This one's like, I don't know. This one's like my comfort pick. I prefer him over the rest, because the rest don't really do anything that that the others don't do. They don't particularly have anything else. You can take them if you want the energy, but why not just take someone else? Like any of these busted ass units over here that would cover your energy requirements, for example. But yeah, it's just uh this just team building stuff for Yisung anyway. Uh for Yisung, yeah, like there really isn't much else to get for him right now. Uh, maybe the maybe the Liu section would be interesting, but uh, right now really nothing else. So the ego probably uh must get the uh Hong Lu one, not a musket. That's my current stance on whether you should get the egos. Besides that, um that's it for this video, I think. Uh I believe that Yi Sang's ego has a lot of potential. I like it a lot. I think that Hong Lu's ego is okay. It's alright. Like you can get it if you wanna, you can don't get it if you don't wanna. Like right now I don't see a actual use for it because of the energy cost that it has. Unless you're saying that we could get a shit ton of gluttony in the future, then maybe we can consider it to help stack up the rupture. Then that is not a bad idea. But most likely the IDs would also do that anyway, so we, we could just wait for the IDs to come out first. I don't think this ego is going to be core. I think the IDs will be core, and then Yi Sang's ego will be core for that whole gimmick of applying a bunch of rupture and then bursting it. Yep. So that's all. Uh, leave a comment if you have your own opinions. Leave a comment if you want to know uh, about any like things that I did not mention here. I can clarify. I can clarify it for you later. Yeah. Uh, that's it for this video, and thank you all for watching.